my next guest, uh, glad to have him back. Get ready for some full Bluntle nudity with a great rock and roll icon. But to me, he's just Uncle Ted. Ted Nugent, everybody. Here he comes. Greetings, gentlemen. You people deserve me. Let's kick off 2022 <laughs> with some flames coming out of our ass. What do you say? Don, Jim, I love you little monkeys. It's amazing how much energy you always have. Well, you know, I just got in from running the uh, sacred Serengeti of the Nugent, Texas swamplands with a uh, happy Sadie and Coco. By the way, at 73, I wore out my dogs again this morning. No, I really do celebrate every day the stuff I do in the great outdoors. I set some traps. We caught some coyotes, some gray fox, some red fox, a bobcat. Uh, we're catching varmints because I'm a fur daddy. I'm a furry daddy, and we, we tan the hides, and my buddies sell the hides, but I just tan them and give them to my grandchildren for gifts. What says love more than a fresh bobcat hide from Poppy on Christmas morning? Come on. My life is perfect. You guys can celebrate that with me. <laughs> hey, Ted, we've been, we've been celebrating with you for the last, what, 45 years or so? I mean, it's amazing, and, and Jim's right. I mean, the energy is just completely out of bounds. You got the new single out. Come and take it, which, let's face it, could be the new national anthem. What do you think? Well, it has been the national anthem in the Nugent camp for many, many years. In fact, as soon as I wrote this definitive government love song, come and take it. You know, it's the old battle cry. If you want to take away our guns, I'll give you my address. Google map my address, <laughs> Beto O'Rourke and, and Joe Biden. If you're going to take away our guns, start with me, assholes, and we'll have a little Concord Bridge party. What do you say, King George? Does this ring any bells? <laughs> no, it's, a, it's just a great piece of spontaneous, organic music. And I got to tell you guys. How we've talked about this all the time, and I appreciate you guys delving into and probing and scrutinizing real music by real musicians. How about the piss and vinegar and the unbelievable talent and dedication to soulful music by Greg Smith on the bass guitar and Jason Hartless on the drums? Am I the luckiest guitar player in the world? And you hear it on that song, and wait till you hear the next single, American Campfire. I, I'm telling you, when we get together in the Nugent Swamp Barn with all the recording equipment, with Michael Lutz, the author of Smoking in the Boys Room, Brownsville Station, when I'm surrounded by real music lovers like you guys that know how to get the technology so that the guitars sound like me and the drums sound like Jason and the bass sounds like Greg, that's the essence of why you love the music, because we love the music and we want to make sure the bass, drums and guitars and the vocals and everything sound like it sounds when you're right up close in a smoky, dirty, nasty club, a barbecue hell zone rock and roll rhythm and blues club. And that's what you're hearing on my music. And that's why I love it so much. I'm like a I'm like a horny teenager in a garage with my first loud amplifier. And it, even as old as I am with a silver beard, I am still absolutely erect every time I pick up the guitar. <laughs> It's amazing that you still have the passion for it. You know, these guys lose it after a while. You're always putting out new music every couple of years, two, three years. You got another album, go back on tour. You usually go on tour every summer, which yeah. is great. I try to catch a, a show. but um, And you always have a killer band, no matter who's in the band. I mean, Greg's phenomenal. Yeah, You know, your yeah. drummer's unbelievable. Hey, when you pick him up, when he was like 19 years old... He's yeah, he, I hired uh, Jason, or Jason tracked me down when he was 19 years old. But really, uh, what you're talking about, Jim and Don, think going back, and you guys weren't around in 1958 when I started the Lourdes, which I just lost John Brake, the original singer from 1958. John just died here last year. And uh, Gunnar Ross, the incredible Detroit drummer that played on Fred Bear, he just died last month. Oh, wow. And, and I've lost so many great, great founding fathers that passed the baton from Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley on to me back in Detroit. But if you really examine the, the indescribable, even though I'm really good at describing it, the <laughs> gifts, the musical authority that is Jason, that is Greg, that is Tommy Aldridge and Tommy Clefettos and Mick Brown and KJ Knight and Dave Palmer. And, and I, I'm, I'm, I could name every musician I've ever collaborated with and they were all dangerously gifted at their instrument because they put their heart and soul into it. And if they didn't, they wouldn't have ended up playing with Ted Nugent. You look at the damn Yankees, you look at Cliff and Derek and Rob, and you look at uh, Dave Kaswini and Carmine Apice. Are you, oh. 
how do how could I possibly deserve <laughs> to have a list of musicians like that? And I'll tell you why. Because I didn't invent the middle finger, but I did perfect it, and I've never charged royalties. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and not only are they, you know, Greg and uh, Jason, great musicians, they're also great people. You know, Greg, yeah. I got to say, Ted, you know, Greg really helped me out personally during the pandemic, you know, when Jim and I could not get out and perform anywhere because everything was closed. You know, I was going out to the mountains of Pennsylvania to hang with Greg out there and, you know. How about it? And, it, and they, he'd get his cover band together and we would do these Facebook Live things and I'd go out there and do some stand-up and, you know, it was just a way to let off some steam. And I guess for you, man, it's, I think, two summer tours you have not been able to do, so you got to be raring to go and have something special planned for summer 2022. Well, yeah, you're right. Uh, you know, I live this dreamy life every day i fight for truth logic and common sense in the media i i do interviews and i do podcasts literally every day of the week i have my own ted nugent spirit campfire our ted nugent spirit of the wild show is about conservation and and wildlife participation but i also i also maneuver in some political statements because the american dream is political the whole concept of uh, experimenting in self-government is to abide by the self-evident truths as outlined in the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. I include the Ten Commandments, the Golden Rule, the Declaration of Independence, and uh, I feel good by James Brown. But my point is, <laughs> is that what you're what you're what you're articulating there is is a domineering pulse in my life to be autonomous to be independent, self-sufficient, and I think you hear that not just in the glaringly obvious titles of my songs, American Campfire, Tooth Fang and Claw, Fred Bear, Great White Buffalo, Living in the Woods, Hibernation, Migration. What do you think that theme might represent? <laughs> the point is, is that when the communist government in the, in the White House, when they started attacking America, shutting down mom and pop businesses, but encouraging big corporate businesses you can't go to mom and pop grocery stores but you can go to walmart i mean what kind of prick what kind of <laughs> rotten soulless prick would declare such an anti-american policy but we've seen it everywhere so i missed out on 2020 i missed out on 2021 but i've always done these ted nugent greasy speakeasies down here in waco and i get up and jam with john john kutz on drums johnny big on bass guitar another example of just a guitar player's dream rhythm section. And we play a bunch of Chuck Berry and Bo Diddley and Little Richard and Sam and Dave and Wilson Pickett and Motown and the Stones and the Beatles and the Kinks and the Who and the Amboy Dukes and my my classics. So I've never stopped flexing that uh, that that Motor City eruption of high energy rhythm and blues and rock and roll. But I gotta tell you guys, and I, I'm on Facebook communicating with millions of people every day and I'm getting all these unsolicited testimonials of sheer love and, and celebration of a unified truth, logic, common sense, we the people, work ethic, goodwill, decency, and all that radical stuff. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> my point is, is that I've getting a bunch of feedback, which I love feedback. Wait till you hear the song Feedback Grindfire. Do I come up with the greatest yeah, titles? Great. Right? <laughs> yeah. Feedback Grindfire. You're going to listen to it and you're going to go, who the fuck does he think he is? Um, <laughs> Uh, but it's just Unleash Fury. Unleash Fury is my music, but there are venues across America that are succumbing to immoral, anti-freedom, anti-constitutional oath rules and regulations regarding masks that everybody know don't work and vax cards that are so Joseph Goebbels and Nazism that if there are facilities that demand such anti-freedom policies with masks and vax card. By the way, it's not a vaccine. Everybody knows it's not a vaccine. It's an emergency experimental shot. And if you come towards me with an experimental emergency shot, I'll cut you in half. You might want to write that down. Um, so, so my point is, is that I can't wait to unleash my songs. Jason and Greg and I have the tightest musical delivery in the world. And we love every song. We put our heart and soul into every gig, every night. But if there are un-American, actually anti-American rules at some of these venues, there won't be a Ted Nugent tour. Just like Eric Clapton said, if you force immoral decrees on free people, 
I will have nothing to do with that. And that would be a shame. But again, I, I, I have so much cravings for my music. One way or another, I'm going to get Greg and Jason and I to once again punch each other backstage as we get ready to we literally <coughs> punch each other we, like like Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson duking it out to get ready to play these songs because we are so excited to play this music but if there are anti-freedom regulations they can kiss my flame throwing ass <laughs> there you go yeah I mean you know we don't know we don't know what's going to happen by the summer well yeah well as long as we're not Australia because we see what's happening there but yes Ted is the crave man he will get out on the road uh, this summer and so it'll feel like summer again because you know Jim and I always come out to the shows and, and we look forward to them and, real music lovers yeah real music lovers who like real live music um, and also as you mentioned obviously you are always wear Detroit on your sleeve. The new album is yeah. called Detroit Muscle. Yeah. Um, and I always love the artists <clears throat> who wear where they're from on their sleeve unabashedly. You know, you, uh, Eminem, Alice Cooper. You know, Kid and, Rock. Kid, Kid Rock. Rock, big time. You know, not a huge yeah. Kid Rock fan, but I will say this, man, he's done probably more for that city than than any politician in the last 20 years. He creates jobs, oh, yeah. He you know, he opens business there, and he yep. flies the flag for Detroit at all times and if you look at the history of rock and roll a lot of the best stuff came out of your hometown you know and it's universal around the world you've seen uh, so many artists re reference that when they play detroit they really have to bring their a game because mitch Ryder and the detroit wheels back before they were called mitch Ryder and the detroit wheels and bob seeger and the herd and the lourdes before i moved to chicago in 65 we won the michigan battle of the bands because we put Fire into the music. I always call it the forehead vein popping vetting process. If your forehead veins are not bulging <laughs> out by the guitar solo, you're playing <laughs> shitty music and you're not doing it with any heart and soul. And that's why everybody was so in love with James Brown and Wilson Pickett and Sam and Dave and, and certainly Howlin' Wolf and Muddy Waters and, and Steven Tyler and, and Sammy Hagar and all the great artists that we love. There was always that crescendo where you can tell the guy's about to kill himself he's putting so much into it you could swear he's gonna pass out which many of us did on occasion so i come from an era in detroit where the motown funk brothers set the bar for heart and soul now the motown funk brothers didn't have many forehead vein popping going on but the artists that they played the soundtrack on all those hit records all those artists did from stevie wonder to the four tops of the temptations even the supremes with the pop music there was this this fire, this passion, which the Stones and the Beatles figured out, which is why the Stones and Beatles' first albums had Chuck Berry, Bo Diddley, Little Richard, and Motown songs, because there would be no British invasion without American rock and roll. So, so that is still alive and well all across this country. And on Detroit Muscle, the, the opening lick is, uh, strap your ass in. I've got a fire breathing Mopar. Downtown Detroit is like a rock and roll dream. Kick out the jams if you really want to go far because Motor City's soul going to make you scream. So it's about the musical horsepower. And I happen to love real Motor City Detroit muscle horsepower in the vehicles. All my vehicles, all my vehicles have been custom tuned. They're all over 800 horsepower and they get about 600 yards to the gallon. So I really enjoy. <laughs> Joy, <laughs> neck snapping torque and horsepower yes. and it's in, right. in fact i don't know if i don't know if this technology can deliver the sound that i have in this room because the sound i have in this room is absolutely spectacular yeah, yeah. let's get let's get a little yeah like, let's listen going to here. this lick a little riffage listen to yeah. this lick. i don't i don't write songs i ejaculate them and <laughs> when i sit down with the guitar <laughs> these kinds of licks come up <laughs> Beautiful. And the whole record 
is this pile-driving, neck-snapping, skull-crushing, animal-breeding soundtrack. And again, Greg Smith and Jason Hartless, when I show them the opening lick, the first time they come in and play it with me, it's perfect. These guys are every songwriter's and every guitar player's dream because they're so tuned in to that, and again, I always reference Chuck Berry, Bo Diddley, Little Richard, <clears throat> Motown, all these black heroes that created this authority, this groove. James Brown, the hardest working man in show business because they were so tight that... that <laughs> If you can't play that shit, you're not invited. <laughs> you know what's great, Ted? You could play those songs on that Jameson show, because when you came on that metal show, we had you on playing guitar, and you wanted to play some of your songs, some riffs from some of your songs, and VH1's like, no, we don't have the rights to it. It's going to cost money, so you can And I remember you arguing with Mike. I own my music. It's all mine. Yes, you can have it. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm accepting. I'm saying it's okay. And they're like, we can't. He goes, but I own it. I know. You're getting right from the horse's mouth. I, I You can have it. He, Ted's well, too logical for people. That's the problem. He's too logical. <laughs> He's like, I'm right here. Yeah, yeah. it's my stuff. You can, you can. You, I, I'm going to play it. it. Take it. Well, I'll tell you. I know you guys love me. I feel the love because it's reciprocal. Uh, because we love piss and vinegar. We love autonomy. We love rugged individualism. We love real defiant, <laughs> fun, intense rock and roll. So we have a mutual love affair. I know that. I have it with all good people around the world. But here's here's how you're going to love me even more. Because what I ran into in New York City, in Manhattan, on that metal show, when they said I couldn't play my own licks, do you know how close I came to punching somebody in the throat that night? Who on God's green earth can dictate to me what, where, if, or when I play anything? And here's 1967, the Amboy Deuce. I brought him from Chicago where I graduated from high school in 67. And we immediately became the most powerful band in Detroit because we were clean and sober and we were focused on tightness and energy and, and adventure. You listen to some of the Amboy Dukes music, that's some clever, outrageous, unprecedented chord changes and adventure and sounds and unif uniform licks with the incredible Greg Raymond, Dave Palmer and Steve Farmer and, uh, and John Brake, God rest his soul, God rest Steve Farmer, so he died last year too. And, and, and uh, Andy Solomon on the B3 and Rick Lober on the Fender Roads. So my point is, is that we, we put our heart and soul, we, we'd rehearse for 20 hours straight. And then I'd go another 24 with Dave. I mean, we, we wanted to deliver the, the absolute beast of the best. So we're getting ready to go on stage. Uh, the MC5 had played, uh, I think, the, uh, not the Up, terrible band, uh, not the... Uh, uh, some of those bands, uh, Third Power and the Scott Richardson case and Dick Wagner and the Frost, unbelievable bands. I wish you guys could have seen Oh, Dick Wagner is phenomenal, yeah. Holy, that solo on Train Kept a Rolling, the live Aerosmith, that's Dick Wagner on guitar. Yep. I hope you know that. Anyhow, yep. so my point is, is I can't wait to get on stage at the, the, the world-class Grandy Ballroom. It was the epicenter of the most fire-breathing music in the world. Every artist will tell you that's where the Led Zeppelin did their first American gig. That's where uh, Jeff Beck uh, group did their gig. Every great band on the planet played the Grandy. And I'm getting ready to go on stage to play my music. Music that I sacrificed and, and put my guts into. I did without sleep and without food. Never did without sex. But I always <laughs> sacrificed to create the beast of beast music. So I got Dave and Greg and Steve and, and I think it was Andy. No, it was Rick still, Rick Lober. And John, we're getting ready to go on stage to play Baby Please Don't Go and all these great songs. And there's this guy in a cardigan sweater. Is, that, is there such a thing as a cardigan sweater? Uh -oh. A cardigan sweater. <clears throat> Um, it looks like the uh, the pennies going back to school clothing ad. Anyhow, <laughs> this guy's up there all well-groomed, and he's on the steps going, hey, let me see your union card. I was uh, 19, 18, and I go, you want to see what? Union card? What, 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 what are you, why are you standing in our way? What, what's a union card? 
What's a union? I had no idea. I had no idea there was such a thing as a union. I'd all, I've been addicted to playing guitar and making music with my bands all my life. I never heard of a union. I didn't know who, you know, Jimmy Hoffa was. I didn't, I didn't know anything. And this guy's going, well, you can't play without a union card. Well, gentlemen, here's why you really love me. <laughs> I grabbed that motherfucker by the collar, and I, his name was Dennis Day. I remember all this stuff. His name was Dennis Day, and he was the rep for Union 5 Local Musicians Union. I didn't know any, I didn't know what he was talking about. All I knew is this prick thought I had to show some kind of paperwork to play my music. (laughs) I grabbed that. I'm not a violent guy, but I'm a self-defense addict. And I was defending my right Clearly, I have a right to play my music that we worked so hard on creating. And I didn't know what he was talking. I grabbed that mother. I <laughs> yanked him down. And John Sinclair with the MC5 was standing there, all glassy-eyed and all stoned, a little spittle in the corner of his mouth, some drool coming down. And I think he had wet his pants. But John Sinclair was there. And he's one of these peace and love kind of guys, which will get you nowhere. And he watched me. And I... I dragged this prick off the... And I knocked him on the ground. And I went down <laughs> like I was going to kill him and i was just short of wanting to and i said you who the fuck do you think you are you can't tell me if i can play my music you get in my way once again i'll break your fucking neck and everybody's going back going wow man that's that's heavy (laughs) yeah it's heavy because i'm going to go on stage and i don't need to show you any paperwork so he backed off but eventually I discovered you got to be a member of the musicians union to play in union halls. Yeah, well, here's my card, you prick. <laughs> and so my point is, is what I ran into on that metal show was so wrong. It's so illogical. It's so stupid that I don't need anybody's permission on planet Earth <laughs> to do jack shit. Because there's only two people in charge of my life. Well, three, including Shemaine. But there's two people (laughs) that guide my decisions. Me and God Almighty. And if you intervene, I might hire Mike Tyson just to punch you in the eye one time. (laughs) Well, what a lot of people don't know is not only was Ted Pack in heat when he came to that metal show, which... I I had a pistol. I had a a a pistol pistol. on me at the time. (laughs) And uh, and luckily you didn't throw Eddie Trunk down on the ground and and beat him with an inch of his life, because... No, Eddie, well, all you guys knew that it was wrong, but you were strangled by these... uh, draconian regulations, especially in New York City, which, by the way, let me make a comment, which I'm really good at doing. You know, here it is, 20 (laughs) clusterfuck 22, and we just got past clusterfuck 20 and clusterfuck 21. But you know how much I would love to just fly with Shemaine to Chicago for the weekend, for the great food, the great people, the great atmosphere, the Miracle Mile, my friends, uh, Do you know how much I would love to? My buddy's got a jet and he'll take me anywhere I want. I could call him and go, let's go to New York City this weekend and eat some killer food and just celebrate that that defiant, rugged atmosphere in New York City. In 2022, you can't. Mm -hmm. What? And and it's 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 a manifestation of a cultural deprivation that was we witnessed at the metal show. Who the hell thinks they have (laughs) such authority? And those pricks now ruin Chicago. They ruin Seattle. They ruin Portland. They ruin Baltimore. They've ruined Detroit. And and it's a heartbreak. So people are going, well, I'm not into politics. Then go to Cuba where you're not allowed to, (laughs) dirtbag. Well, this is true. And, you know, Ted is uh, always stands up for America, as he should, and recently just played uh, before the uh, the Trump Save America rally, and we have a little clip of that, Bobby. We put that up there and watch Ted playing a little of the uh, Star Spangled Banner. Have been when Brady won that one in February with, there we go. with Tampa Bay, he's like, fuck, now I gotta trick got three more guys, God damn it! What happened there? Put that a little audio, because those licks were awesome. Licks. I've Ted never played those licks there. before. I come up with these new there licks. <sighs> Hold on, now we got it. Bless 
Just that Burt Lang guitar and those fingers running across the fretboard, Ted. Detroit Muscle is the new album. Pre-order it now. It comes out April 29th. The first single is out. It's called Come and Take It. It's the new national anthem of rock and roll. So don't forget to get that. Um, if Ted Nugent was elected president in 2024, what's the first three things that you do, President Nugent? I would arrest every Democrat for treason, and I would arrest. An, I would arrest the director of the FBI. I would arrest Fauci. I would arrest everybody at the CDC. I would arrest okay. anybody that has committed oath-violating treasonous acts, which means we'd have to buy some more handcuffs. <laughs> Absolutely, and you know, a lot of people think you know, yeah, uh, you can't get Ted to stop talking. I I figured out a way. I'm the only guy who figured out a way to get Ted to not speak. By asking one simple question, um, name all the positive things that the Biden, administra Biden administration has done since they took office. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the only guy who figured out how to stump. I, uh, is there an audio Isn't problem? That true? Yeah. I think Ted, Ted's audio went out. We didn't hear what you said. Well, you know Ted. what? You know, it's true. And, you know, we do have shit eating grins on our face because you have to laugh at the level of atrocities that were subjected to by this treasonous government. People go, what do you mean treason? How about that you open the borders and, and invite chemical warfare, killing millions of Americans with your drug cartel friends and their fentanyl and their poisonous meth? If that's not treason, what would be? Well, and, and nowadays, you know, it, which, which sucks is you're not even allowed to have a conversation with somebody that feels differently. But in, in Ted's case, and, and I know everybody, t you know, takes Ted to the extreme, but, you know, you, you have friendships with other musicians who feel differently. In fact, you know, very unlikely friendship in people's eyes with a guy like Tom Morello, who feels very differently, but yet you guys can still converse and you could make music together and 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 all that stuff and it's not sure. a problem sure well you know here's a perfect example um you couldn't get further apart um uh, ideologically uh politically or truth logic and common sense wise than me and bruce springsteen but here i'll show a little love for bruce number one i've been able to perform on the uh, conan show with the east street band which is one of the greatest joys of my life i've always been surrounded by the best musicians and that's a perfect example we played uh, J uh jenny take a ride by mitch Ryder, and uh, max and the guys performed it with unbelievable uh, accuracy and perfection and soulfulness so i give them that salute for having that quality of virtuosos that deliver his music and instead of going after bruce for being a dirtbag and and supporting you know communists like biden and obama people that ruined quality of life especially for minorities um how how he can't see that i don't know but i would like to be right here live on that jameson show with my friends <laughs> jim and don to salute bruce springsteen because he always supported mitch Ryder and the detroit wheels a foundational fortified a10 warthog of musical authority in all great bands lives and i've always promoted jimmy mccarty on gibson birdland and the and the the gretch country gentleman and joe kubrick on the es335 cherry from kalamazoo and johnny banagic who was playing those drums at 15 and earl elliott who played a rickenbacker through a ampeg b18 and the incredible billy levice mitch Ryder. and for if if nothing else if i met bruce I wouldn't punch him. I always have Mike Tyson with me, and I give him a hundred bucks to punch assholes. And I wouldn't have Mike punch him. I would say, Mike, take the take a minute off. Go find some other asshole to punch. But I'm going to say thank you to Bruce Springsteen because we share the reverence and the admiration for musical integrity, enthusiasm, and you have to admit, <clears throat> Bruce's career is based on his musical heart and soul. The the delivery and content of his lyrics, I, I don't abide by most of the time. I love the, the reference to the uh, Dust Bowl in, in, in Jode. Uh, but, but I would thank him for his enriching lives with powerful music. I wouldn't go into his communist pr predilections. Yeah. I, I also, also thank him for doing a 9-11 <clears throat> tribute. So he's got some great, great spirit. And like Tom Morello... I would tell Tom, I love you, Tom. He's a great husband. He's a great father, great guitar player, and he's a good, kind man. But I would also say, Tom, why would you wear a, a shirt with a picture of Che Guevara on it? 
because Che Guevara would have killed you first. He's a homicidal, genocidal maniac. Why don't you just wear a Charles Manson or an Adolf Hitler shirt? Tom, what are you doing? <laughs> well, we're raging against the machine. Well, you're not raging against the machine that made your guitars. You're not raging against the machine that built that facility you do a concerts in. And you're not raging against the machine that grows your family's food. You're also not raging against the machine of the airline industry that flew you to your concert. Who the hell are you raging? Who are you raging against? <laughs> Nobody! Uh, that's yeah, they're great. slightly raging. And here's the perfect, here's why you guys love me and this is why i love me what is what is the response to what i just said it's irrefutable what i just said you hey carlos santana you're wearing a che Guevara shirt tell me you know he would have killed you and your family why are you doing that so i nobody will debate me they're scared to death that they will drown in my truth logic common sense <laughs> and evidence supported tsunami so that's why i'm radical because the people who hate me can't debate me <laughs> that's great well listen you you that's a great new song people yeah. that hate me can't debate me i i guess <laughs> yeah, a new right. title that's a, or at least a lyric, yeah, I like that. Um, but I, I like that either that or my love is like a tire iron. Yeah. So, but, <laughs> what great songs. I mean, I come on. If, I know I'm not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and I'm, I am not have no sour grapes about it. It's a right. stupid, dishonest mistake. But I should be in it just for my song titles. <laughs> <know>, absolutely. <laughs> right. Well, hey, Wang Dang, Sweet Poon Tang. Come on! Wang -o -tang -o. Wang -o -tang -o. Come on! Even though album titles and intensities in ten cities, come on. <laughs> Let's talk about that album quickly while while we're on the subject. Because what what classic legendary artist has ever just gone out and put out a live album of songs that were never featured on a studio album? That's Ted's the first guy I've ever. I've ever seen do something like that. Yeah, I never heard of it either. That was that was a weird choice at that time. It was a great record, though. I don't know. Um, what, what were you? I from? love it, boy. Yeah. That was a great, great record, man. Cliff Davies on drums oh. and Dave Cosmini. My God, another example of the incredible gentleman work ethic, musical monsters. But what? How the energy? My love is like a tire iron. Well, of course <laughs> it is. I mean, these are great, great musical moments. It's like every song has like a. Uh, 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 a middle finger that happens to be on fire, but fun songs and intense performances. Listen, listen to Cliff Davies, God rest his soul. We lost that great man many years ago. Too soon. But what, what, a, what an incredible band. Again, I, I don't give a shit whether you like that I eat venison or not. I don't, what the hell does that have to do with anything? Listen to the fucking music. It's awesome. <laughs> Well, well, that's the yes, <laughs> and and anytime you know we'll talk to you all day. But so anytime you want, you're ready to jump off. Just just cut us off. But you know, I I so much respect, obviously, for you know, uh, you you want integrity here with our government and and here in America, but also that's all mu but also the musical integrity. And you alluded to the to the Hall, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but I, I, I wanted to get your opinion on this because this stat just came out. The number one rock song last year had over 2 million streams the number one pop song had over 200 million streams mm -hmm. what, 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 what's your thoughts on that Ted? Well my, I don't have any thoughts but I have evidence and conclusions based on that evidence and that is that the music industry doesn't exist it's uh, if you listen to the hot music today, the hit songs, especially those that country garbage. Oh God, what what awful music is that? Um, it sounds like it, most of the music, and I love Toby Keith, and I love uh, Blake Shelton, and a guy named Tim Montana. But that's not country. The, by the way, Blake's band and Toby Keith's band, Big and Rich, uh, uh, Michael Austin. You got to check out this Michael Austin guy, and 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 Tim Montana. These are great artists that kind of. <clears throat> kind of think they're country but their bands are stone cold rhythm and blues bands i've played with all of them they're monster soulful authoritative virtuosos but the music especially that country crap it sounds like something you'd hear on a cheap speaker at a county fair ferris wheel <laughs> it's you, you could turn on some kids propaganda cartoon show saturday morning it sounds just like hit music today it's really sad and one of the reasons is we just spent scads of money 
stupid amounts of money because you have to to get all the technology and you get Tim and Andy paddling, masters of musicality. Michael Lutz, masters. I have flight, you know, Greg and, and Jason, I pay them top dollar and we get everything and we got a flights and hotels and, tr- and vehicles and equipment shipped and, and, it, it, and, and uh, technicians to help us and you're dropping thousands of dollars an hour. So I get a penny? For every 10,000 streams, something like I, So why would a guy spend the hours that Billy Gibbons and Ted Nugent, Rick Nielsen, and even the Green Day goofballs, who would spend all that dedication <laughs> practicing if you're not going to get... Why would you buy land, plant apple trees, the fertilizer, the uh, fr- frozen spring episode uh, heaters, uh, and groom and prune and the tractor and the and the the the, the gas and and the the taxes. Why would you spend millions of dollars to grow these really wonderful apples if you can't even get back the fertilizer costs? I mean, I never went to college. I was too busy learning shit. What I just outlined was, um, you know, supply and demand uh, capitalism, which is where quality of life begins and ends. Uh, so, so there's no compensatory inspiration or motivation for people to spend the time that Eddie Van Halen spent in the, in the basement d- creating this magical musical capability. And so that's why, even God bless the Foo Fighters, but where's the fucking guitar solo? Where's the crescendo? And nobody's better than Dave at crescendoing. But that's why all the best music in the world, it built, and the crescendo, and the guitar solo. And you're not going to get a fire-breathing guitar solo. There's at least a distant. We never did it for the money because I did it before when I was flat broke all the time. But, but in the back of our head, if you really deliver a beautiful, organic, crisp, delicious apple, you might get paid for it. Well, then I'll go ahead and get up early, stay up late and invest in all this land and an apple orchard because I may be able to support my family someday if I deliver a quality apple. And if, for anybody who's missing out on this metaphor, call <laughs> 1-800-NUMNUT and Michael Moore will explain it to you. Well, that's, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, well, it, yeah, well, that's that's hey, why. If, if, the, if the guitar solo is not a crescendo and nobody's inspired, even uh, uh, um, what, uh, Greta Van Fleet out of Michigan, of course, mm-hmm. um, they have guitar solos. And, and they obviously practice, and but they're so, and I don't mean to diss them at all. I love the guys. I, I worship that they're still continuing real rhythm and blues oriented rock and roll. But enough Zeppelinism, enough, uh, enough re- replicating, uh, you know, Getty Lee mm-hmm. versus Zeppelin. And I'm not, not again, I'm, no. I'm just, that's my own but personal put your own choice. heart and soul into it. Yes, but where's the ZZ Top? Where's the mm-hmm. Montrose? Where's the Van Halens? Where's the Aerosmiths? Where's the Cheap Tricks? Where's the Journeys? And I know all those bands I just mentioned are still working because that's the greatest music in the history of the world and people love it. Thank God for real music lovers. And that's one thing about Ted. You know, the first concert I ever saw was at the opening of Giant Stadium, Aerosmith, Ted Nugent, Frank Marino, Mahogany Rush. Monsters. Then I saw August 4th, 1979, ACDC on the Highway to Hell tour open for Nugent. Uh, my brother saw oh. Nugent and Skinner right before the plane went down, like two weeks before they were supposed to play the Garden. Yeah. Ted was on tour yeah. with Skinner at the time. Always brought out great bands with them, so I was never afraid of the band before him might do better than him, blow him off the stage or anything. You know, no. Bon Scott, you, Highway you, to Hell. You thought Ted had a confidence problem? <laughs> no, but it's just like yeah. some bands are a little insecure about that. Like, man, I got, you know, bringing out Aerosmith, bringing out, I don't know who was headlining, Leonard Skinner, Nugent. And they do, and ba- band, bands do do that because they're scared to be upstage. I crave being upstage because I was <laughs> raised by Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels and the MC5 and Grand Funk Rail Course. I was in that vortex with them. But when I watched Mark Farner's forehead veins pop, when I saw Mitch Ryder's, when I saw uh, uh, the MC5, Rob Tyner's forehead pain, he didn't even wait for the crescendo. He His forehead veins popped on the opening lick. <laughs> and so in Bob Seger, there was a soulfulness. Yeah. So the competition wasn't taken as, you know, us against them. No, it was taken forever to this day. What do you got? 
give me your best shot because I'm going to kick your <laughs> ass. But I'm going to do it musically. And, and I will inspire them. They will inspire me. Mm -hmm. And that still exists in those classic rock and roll bands. I'm not, I don't know about, uh, and again, I don't even know any new bands. And certainly country bands don't feel that way. That's why Toby Keith sings Stranglehold every night because he needs to. <laughs> and that's why Hank William Jr. plays Cat Scratch Fever every night. He needs to. He needs a crescendo. And that's why Kid Rock plays Cat Scratch Fever every night, even though he doesn't need to. But he, he, he genuflects at the altar of my passing the Chuck Berry baton, the soul music baton forward. And I couldn't be more proud. And if you want to see the the just brain dead soulless division in, in the music world listen to people who hate me that'll say hey nugent's not even a real guitar player he hasn't had a good idea in his life R really really mm. why i mean i just made a i just hugged bruce springsteen didn't i i'm not afraid to acknowledge that he has musical genius and his band is one of the best in why why would the haters why would Paul McCartney attack me for eating venison and claiming I've never had a good musical idea and I'm not a real artist? Paul, put the bong down, pal. It's okay. I'm not against you. Have another tofu salad. I'll make sure I kill all the animals that interfere with your bean production so you can have a bloodless salad, you lying, dishonest, hypocritical dirtbag. <laughs> Did Paul McCartney really say you didn't have a good you never came up with a good guitar like? Oh, he said it. On, well, here's a great story. I have wonderful, great stories. <laughs> he should be playing is, Stranglehold every night, for God's sakes. Well, my my point is, I mean, I, how stupid can you be to say something like that? I mean, how much dope do you have to shovel into your mouth to be that stupid? My point is, is that in Detroit, uh, Paul McCartney and Wings came through. Everybody plays Detroit. It's it's the greatest rock and roll epicenter in the world. Everybody knows that. And so Paul McCartney, God love him. Um, he's coming through with uh, Wings on their first tour. I don't know, in the 80s, was it maybe? And uh, he's doing interviews. I think it was Doug Podell at uh, uh, WRIF back in those days. Um, but it doesn't matter who or which station. But he's doing an interview talking about influence of Detroit and Motown, which is obviously the, pro the propulsion of Beatles music. Really got a hold on um, and, and, and uh, roll over Beethoven. I mean, all this American shit kicker music created the Beatles. And he was acknowledging that, especially Motown artists. He was going right down the list. And so the interviewer said, well, you know, we continue that tradition of great, great music in Detroit. We've got Bob Seger and we've got uh, Ted Nugent. And he goes, well, Bob Seger's great, but Ted Nugent, he's not a real, he's not even a real musician. And the guy went, well, what do you mean by that? Well, he's never had a good idea. He's just a bad person. And that was the year I think I was voted the number one guitar player in the history of Detroit, by the way, which was an accurate vote back then. And and so he's he's bad mouthing me and the interview had to like kind of steer him away from it because all of a sudden Paul got angry. Mm. And Paul's a sweetheart. He shouldn't get angry. Yeah. And if you don't like somebody, why 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 just move on so of course they immediately called me go you should did you hear what paul mccartney said and i went yeah everybody's told me and they said would you like to uh respond and i went you think um <laughs> so they had me on but here here's why you guys love me and, and I'm, I'm not being facetious i mean i good people love good people yeah goodwill decency positive spirit true empathy True compassion. This, this is what we share. This is what good people share. So they thought I was going to go on a tirade and just really attack Paul. So they played the tape and they said, well, what do you have to say to that? What would you say to Paul? And I go, I, I would say what everybody would say. Thank you. Thank you for enriching our lives with the greatest music in the history of the world. Thank you for bringing such American soulful music to the world with such a, a, a dedicated accurate representation of Chuck Berry and Little Richard and, 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 and Bo Diddley and certain my, my beloved Motown Funk Brothers. All I'd have to say to Paul McCartney is thank you. You've, you've brought such enrichment and happiness with your amazing musical gifts and songwriting talents. That's all I would have to say. Ted, were you more of a Stones guy or a Beatles guy? You know, the Stones had a bit of an edge. I can play Every Keith Richards solo and every Brian Jones lick, um, 
on all their first six or seven <laughs> albums. Everybody in Detroit learned. <laughs> I, I used to. I actually written. I knew every bass part, every rhythm part, every lead part, every vocal lyric, <laughs> the uh, Lords. We were already rocking and rolling before the Beatles and Stones came out. But by 1962, I think we first heard the, the Beatles and the Stones. But the Beatles, I mean, paperback writer. And even I want to hold your hand. I was 12 years old, uh, 12 or 13. So there, what, what the producer brought forth in the richness of the guitar, bass and drums, and of course, their unbelievable vocal capabilities and their unbelievable tightness and, and reverence for revering and honoring Chuck Berry with his songs in Bo Diddley. So their, their accuracy in delivering American music, it kicked us in the ass to realize that we were, we were in America where the, the Beatles and Stones got their inspiration. So we played all the Beatles music. We played all the Stones music, all the Kinks, all the Who. Uh, uh, we were addicted to that. But we already were playing the American music versions of what they were inspired by. But I, I gave the Stones a slight edge because it was just a little nastier, a little yeah. bit yep. a little bit more greasy. I liked a little mm -hmm. bit more greasy. Though the best Beatles, like um, I'm Down, Paul McCartney's vocals on I'm Down, are you kidding me? And I don't know if I can remember. <laughs> I can't remember all the licks. I used to know all of them. <laughs> I used to know all those licks. And yeah. now I've got some, the, the new single is called American Campfire, and you can tell it's a, a, a variation of all those originals. And the American Campfire lick goes. <laughs> Just all that that George Harrison next step from Chuck and Bo and Dwayne Eddy and, and, and Lonnie Mack and all those guitar licks, they're still with me. And by the way, when I come in from skinning a raccoon, I am so <laughs> primal. I'm the only primal guitar player in the world. I got to wash the blood and guts off my hands. So when I grab the guitar, guess what comes out? Blood and guts. So that's why yes. my music is so different because I don't, I don't um, consider an earthly inspiration. I live the earthly inspiration. That's why these songs are so guttural because it's like uh, it, it's as primal. And originally, the black artist from the the blues and the gospel world, it was the best word to describe it is primal. And your favorite music, the Stones, the, the Primal, the Zepp, the Primal, Aerosmith, Primal, Van Halen, David Lee Roth, Primal. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm the only guy who actually has real Primal blood and guts on my hands. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and 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 so we got a little sneak peek of the next single off Detroit Muscle, which comes out April 29th. Pre-order it now. Uh, go go to go uh, uh, to Ted Nugent's. Um, Spirit of the Wild Facebook page. He does campfires on there all the time. Very interactive with the fans. The new single, which we'll, we'll go out on uh, when we're wrapping up with you here, is called Come and Take It. We heard a little bit of it at the top. Um, and uh, before any last statements before you leave us, Ted. Well, thanks for uh, celebrating real music because no, it's not just about Jim and Don and Ted. There is a huge swath of humanity out there that, our quality of life, our, our happiness, our dreams, our, our world has a soundtrack. And That's for right. you guys to show such respect and reverence, and again, not just me, but all the music that you celebrate and all the musicians that you honor and pay tribute to and, and, and thank. And we thank you for thanking us. So I'm speaking, I, I never just speak about what Ted Nugent might presume. I don't have any presumptions. I, I genuflect at the altar of truth, logic, common sense, Again, positive energy and spirit. And so when I thank you, it's, it's a 
a whole army of humanity that thanks both of you guys, Jim and Don, because you stayed true to the soulful music that is so inspiring to you and us, because we're all the same. But if, if, I, if I may, I've been on my Facebook today already, and people are asking me, what is the current battle cry in America? And I would like to think that it's come and take it, and I will not comply. Yes. And I, I signed another thousand of these hats yesterday, and we're selling them like hotcakes. And if you want it personally autographed, come and take it, or I will not comply hat with my big-ass greasy signature on it. By the way, the more you wear my hat with a signature on it, the more chance Michael Moore will discover personal hygiene. So <laughs> if, you, if, if you really want to do something for mankind, go to tednewton.com. <laughs> And you can get my personally autographed hats. Oh, that's awesome. That's man. amazing. Well, thank you so much, man. We love you. You know that. We're going to see you this summer. Uh, we'll, we'll look forward to the new jams. And let's go, Brandon. <laughs>